explanation. What is a T cell? What are you doing to these T cells that can fight cancer? So the body has, the immune system is composed in part of two kinds of lymphocytes. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. We call T cells, the T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes are what make the antibodies that, that essentially we use, that's what we vaccinate for, the great, great antibodies to get rid of viruses. The T cells are made to recognize recognize cells. They're the cellular immune system. They see cells and they target them. There are subsets of T cells. One of them is called the killer T cell, which actually kills the target when it recognizes it. Another is called the helper T cell that when it sees the target, it makes molecules that support expanding the immune response. And so what we're doing is we're isolating cells that are capable of killing that their program. They've already acquired a genetic program that allows them to kill targets. And we're imparting and in introducing into them a receptor that makes them specific to the tumor so that now they can, when they, when they circulate, when they find a tumor cell, they can recognize it and kill it. And we're trying to also introduce genes into these cells so that they not only kill the tumor cell, but when they see the tumor cell and, and secrete the molecules that kill it, they also induce their own proliferation. So they make more copies of themselves so they can now go out and seek out more cancer cells. And again, as soon as they stop seeing a cancer cell, they're no longer active, they're no longer triggered, they no longer expand, and so they, they become resting, they become resting memory cells, which now can stay in the body for a very long time, and if the cancer does recur, they can get reactivated and, and go, undergo the same kind of thing. So we think that essentially this is really taking advantage of what the immune system was designed to do, which is to recognize cellular targets, kill it, and, and protect the host, it doesn't do it well enough against cancer in general, so we think by this molecular engineering, you can change that. Well, we know we can change that. We can change it. And why is this preferable to surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy? Well, it's, well, first of all, surgery is, can only be used for, for targeted lesions. You can't get rid of disseminated disease, and of course, is a, is a procedure associated with some toxicity. So the same thing with chemotherapy and radiation. They have enormous side effects. There's lots of what we call collateral damage. The drugs and the radiation that's used to kill cancer cells also kills uh, normal cells, and so there's lots of normal tissue destruction. And also, it isn't necessarily effective against all cells. What we're hoping here is that, is that these we're giving cells that have the ability not only to recognize cells, but to spread themselves, to circulate through the body, to do what the immune system is designed to do, to seek out cells that express things that they can recognize, get activated, and kill it. And do it with the specificity that the immune system evolved to have so that we will have much less collateral damage, much less toxicity, and hopefully also greater efficacy. Well, again, these trials are all very early, but we have seen dramatic reductions in, in the amount of cancer patients have in many cases. We've seen some complete remissions, or, or at least we can't detect any more evidence of, of tumor after some of these trials. So it's too early to say whether these are going to be durable, whether, these, whether, whether the patients might relapse, whether they would need a second infusion. But what, right now, we've seen in patients with advanced disease, reductions in tumors, in settings where you never see, that, where there's basically no other option. So this is a dramatic, really a dramatic response. And so what we've seen is, is in, extraordinarily encouraging to actually really advance this, to test this on a broader scale, to bring this to a larger fraction of patients, ultimately to be used early in disease uh, and maybe potentially avoid some of the toxicities the patients get before we, we can now treat them. And then what, is that, what exactly is going on right here? So, uh, they, they, have, they have taken, we, we generated cells uh, for the patient uh, prior to, to the patient disease of patients underwent transplant, we generated cells and we froze them down in small aliquots, so in small, small amounts. And now, as the patient is ready for therapy, what we're doing is we take out, take out these vials of, of cells, we thaw them, we then expand, we then put them into tissue culture and expand them. And then when we expand them to a large enough number, we put them into an infusion bag, much like looks like a normal blood cell transfusion and we infuse them into the patients. And as, as we said, we can, by doing this strategy, we can create in these patients T-cell responses that are the most potent response in their body.
So basically, we can really create an immune response that's stronger than anything the patient has against anything. And, and here, they're all targeting the tumor. So.